I wanted to just maybe know what was like a key motivator for you in envisioning this project and its um, evolving scale the way that you did. I would say it's a natural sort of evolution, you know, um, I'm, I'm always interested in, I work on long-term projects. That's my, that's my thing. So they are, I mean, more or less every project that I work on eventually takes on some sort of expansive scope, either across a space or across time. I mean, all of them have something across time, but also, um, uh, sometimes it's on a more conceptual level. There is an expansiveness that I aspire to and sometimes you know you get to do that with projects and specifically this project lend itself to, to that as a possibility so uh, yeah i mean how to how did i get started on it well i mean um it's a project which is uh, on climate change so it's something that you know in involves or uh, uh, concerns all of us um as as humanity as humankind um but more specific to the bengal delta it happens to be one of the ground zeros of climate change so um that being the case um i come from the bengal delta even though like calcutta sits just outside the delta in itself yet uh so you you'll hear some baby noises because that's uh you know there's, there's a little baby just behind me so um yeah mm. And basically, if and when that delta gets destroyed, right, it's a matter of time, sadly, um, then Calcutta or the big cities of Dhaka would also be very widely affected. Uh, and that would include me, my friends, family, you know, so there is that sort of personal motivation in there as well. Also, the like the concerns of like Bengal as a like the people of Bengal, you know, uh, because they are the people from around the Delta. The Delta is going to face a major crisis uh, in the coming days. There are like places which are getting very strongly affected by sea level uh, rise, as well as increasing river erosion. It's not like river erosion was not there before, but it's happening at an increased pace. Uh, we have more super cyclones right now uh, than you know before like even during the like in the last two years in, including during the pandemic we had amfa and yash you know so it's just like it's we're just getting more of everything um, so the concerns of the delta which involve millions of people really i mean you have if you make calls like you would have four or five million people in the immediate vicinity of like a space that would be affected, but then it just covers the entire Delta. So you're looking at 120, 30 million people that could get very affected by um, sea level rise, you know? Yeah. Um, so that all of that is a concern. It's also like a big crisis because it's a lot of people who would might need to get moved at some point, might, might need to get rehabilitated yet like we live in the like in the in india there's no place or in the indian subcontinent there's no place for them to move to you know it just already happened to be uh, one of the most uh, yeah populated densely populated spaces on earth so so that really is the it's a crisis that's kind of coming at us so and that kind of shapes the way of like looking at it by looking at that future but from like the evolving present so kind of trying to play with those timelines and yeah right and so um you talk of like i think the work is it moves across three chapters and um with with three different distinct approaches uh, strategies almost so uh, how did your use of these photographic techniques and strategies um sort of contribute to this exercise in conveying the complexity of of such a site i'm not sure i succeeded but i i hope to you know uh, the i think the the main challenge with climate change is that uh, a it's always happening like it's kind of around us and more so like in the last few years like i started off in 2013 14 you know so there was, le I mean, in India, there was really not much of a discourse around climate change, rather more than like in academic circles or whatever, uh, you know, like there were books that you could read that were from uh, 
written by like global authors, etc. But the, it's just become more of a thing right now. So in that sort of evolution of the project, also traces the evolution of an understanding of climate change, at least in the Indian subcontinent. Um, I think uh, like there was Amitav Ghosh's book that came out that was probably in 17, 18 as well. You know, the, which one was that? The, the Hungry Tiger. forgetting the name. No, the, the one that he wrote on, uh, it's called the climate. Uh, yes, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. It, it's yeah, the, the one where he... Too. It's the one where he talks about like how artists need to respond to climate change. We effort rather than like looking at it as a you know far away dystopia. It's really like a thing that's happening. So literature and and all respond to the to look at that uh, more from like a non, I mean, there is an apocalyptic or prophetic view to it, but uh, but also to kind of locate or concretize it more in like the lived realities of right now. Right. So those were things that kind of came together. Um, sorry, what was your question? I just... Uh... Um, the, um, the strategies that you used, actually, the techniques and how those sort of came yeah, together. Yeah, exactly. So... Yeah. So I, I think like for a lot of the times, like, like visual representation of climate change ends up happening around uh, breaking news events. Like if there's a big flood or there's like a volcanic eruption or an earthquake or, you know, forest fires. So it's always like these big events that end up being part of like the uh, big representation and the big volume of what's what you could call like breaking news photography you know and that's important i'm not discounting it but um, a lot of the times that um we miss the more sort of um the continual process of climate change you know which uh, which is also very difficult to look at from say an editorial perspective or from a perspective of, say, journalism, where, like, in India, there's hardly any space really anymore to really look at uh, a space on a continual basis. So people only can send photographers out or, you know, like, people do things only when big events happen. Yet in a place like the Bengal Delta, like, sea level rise is a continual, gradual thing. So for me, it was more important to look at the sort of the, the daily lived realities of climate change rather than those breaking news events uh, or the big events, let's say. Uh, and so that was uh, kind of, I would say, the main motivation of like, yeah, also, I think there's a transformative shift when you look at it that way in the sense that climate change is something that for people who are faced with sea level rise, it becomes a psychological space because it's something that you're living with all the time, right? So um, it's not really that like there is the looming big event but it's something that's also affecting you on a day-to-day -day basis so those were kind of some thoughts that shaped the project and um yeah i can i mean i can talk in depth about the other project like the, the different chapters and then like how kind of in in sort of the hyperstructure way each project leads from the one before so it's not something i had in place before it's really a natural outcome of like spending more time in the space, talking with people, understanding, and then finding different strategies to, you know, uh, to to find new readings of climate change, essentially. Because, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, A, it's a visual challenge, of course, but it's also interesting to uh, look at that space from like different ways to to see it in different different lights, pun intended, yeah. Right. Um, so I think personally, I've I've always been a bit curious about uh, the contemporary presence of, say, the documentary as a genre, and uh, yeah. and I, and I think how it also comes alive or is activated through this very complex longevity of relationships. Something that your project is also sort of highlighting very poignantly. So um, I wanted to know um, a little bit more about the kinds of relationships that developed between you. Um, and the landscape and its people, uh, I think also particularly, like you said, uh, seeing as how ungraspable the future is for both. Well, I think I'm very interested in the idea of like transformations in landscape. 
um and uh, i if you see like my my other projects also like i i kind of one of the big, big one of my sort of um thing, principles is to like really look at expansive spaces and ideas rather than like uh, follow or fixate upon one person or characters like they're not really character based projects like not nothing is where you know so that's um, that's something that i really um follow in a lot of the projects and conversely like when you do that you end up you know like the underpinning becomes by default something around the landscape uh so that's always and in the case of uh, climate change it's super interesting because you can read small signs in the landscape of how things are evolving how things are eroding how things are transforming um so like there was this one school for example that uh, went from being functional to being abandoned to being you know destroyed or battered by the waves and then you know eventually like end up being being a structure where people are taking the the bricks out to use in their own buildings so you know like it it transforms and becomes part of the community in a different way from what, where from what it was originally envisioned as so i mean things like that interest me a lot let's say and you can see that process over like map out over many years and uh, and that's also interesting in terms of climate change because you like a lot of places have like very strongly knit communities um and uh, after a point like that community is split apart and then people have to you know really find uh, find like run helter skelter to really find a place to you know stay the night like live with their family so you see a lot of that happening in the projects uh, so the only fixtures end up being these sort of structures so that could be a hand pump it could be a school building a structure it could be a cyclone shelter a lot of the times the cyclone shelters work as uh, uh, the school doubles as a cyclone shelter so it's built in a very specific way you see that a lot more in bangladesh uh, where a lot of the work is done as well uh, for me it was very interesting to really in terms of land like understand landscape across borders so i mean you like i have always been very bothered by the fact of partition of course uh, and you know how that landscape has been sort of fractured into these two spaces where one part has evolved as a nation and the other part west bengal is a regional entity amidst a broader indian concept right concept of nationhood so that has its own repercussions in the sense that let's say in bangladesh uh, it's really a muslim country right now and you know and the, there's a demographic inequality to the point that like the hindu population is constantly decreasing the you know and so it's really a um it's very interesting to see how that kind of becomes part of the uh, the landscape the live realities of people and uh, there's not too much work i would say that's been done on a visual level that transcends these ideas of boundaries of course like say with punjab on indian punjab on the pakistan side like it's technically impossible for us to do any work this side it's not that difficult but you still need to get a visa to go to bangladesh i just feel that there's not been enough work uh, done that that uh, subverts the notion of that boundary and at least in a space of climate change where the effects are pretty much the same i mean there's different varying degrees yet like you know so so my work kind of and a lot of other projects that i do kind of try to subvert that notion of this artificial um boundary that we have that's something that uh, i've been thinking more and more about um yeah